Over the years, many, many people, including Meet Kevin at last year's Tesla shareholder meeting, have asked Tesla to do advertising in a big way. And while Tesla has made small steps in that direction, they've never gone big. Should Tesla go big and do a Super Bowl ad? Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. If you have been living under a rock for the past, I don't know, 20 years or so, you might not know that Tesla doesn't do advertising or at least historically did not do advertising. Of course, they have started to do a little bit of that in 2023 and into 2024, but they've never done any kind of major marketing campaign. And the reason why, of course, is that Elon Musk has been very much against that. I don't know exactly how widely spread in the team at Tesla that is, but the early days were pretty much, they were building niche cars that were very, very expensive. In other words, the Roadster, and then even to the Model S and Model X. These were relatively small scale cars in terms of the numbers they were selling. And so word of mouth was completely adequate. And of course, Elon Musk and the higher ups at Tesla rightly argued that it was more important to build a really compelling product than to advertise that product. And if they did, it would sell. And of course it did. You know, the Model S and Model X were very, very successful. When it changed over to the Model 3 and then the Model Y, things changed a little bit because the scale got so much larger. Larger. But Tesla thus far has been very successful in terms of selling their vehicles without doing any up to 2023 and then a small amount of advertising in 2023. But the argument has always been instead, why don't they spend some of their money? And these days with Tesla having as much revenue as it does, it would be really, really a small amount of what they earn to do significant advertising. And of course, the most significant advertising you can do all year and make a big buzz is to do a Super Bowl ad. And of course, while Super Bowl ads cost millions of dollars to produce and millions of dollars to actually run in the Super Bowl itself, relative to Tesla, Tesla's size and their revenue at this point, it's basically pocket change. It's basically a rounding error for Tesla, and so it wouldn't make any difference to their quarterly income statement, but it would be a really interesting thing to do. It would be interesting for Tesla to take some of that money and say F you to the world at large and do a large-scale advertisement like at the Super Bowl, where they would garner a huge amount of attention relative to the amount of money it would cost them. So of course, as I said, Tesla has always really relied on word of mouth and, and to some extent social media because not only Elon Musk, he's got a gigantic presence on X and at large, and he can use that presence on X as a pretty big megaphone, but not only Elon, but, but you know, me and Sawyer Merritt, who I'm going to talk about in just a second, and lots and lots and lots of people are willing to push Tesla's narrative forward for free. We don't, we don't require anything from Tesla in order to do that. So they've been able to work around the need for advertising for years and years, but the problem that occurs is that the bigger and bigger you get and the more sales you need, the harder it is to reach every individual who might be interested in your product. So even if you build a very compelling product, there is an argument to be made that people, there's a large percentage of the population that simply doesn't know about it, or alternatively might have heard bad news about it because of course there are competitors in every space. And in the automotive industry, there are lots of competitors and they're very cutthroat and they're perfectly willing to pay for and or feed and or help legacy media create stories that have a really negative spin about Tesla. So the argument would be, you need to correct that. You need to kind of course correct the ship. And I've made this argument over the years as well. My argument has always been that you're not advertising for today's consumers for Tesla. You're advertising for tomorrow's consumers. That's the person you're interested in. And with the next gen vehicle probably coming out at the end of 2025, maybe early 2026, that's exactly the time frame we're looking at, about two years. You need to advertise to get people thinking thinking about you, not necessarily about that particular car, but thinking about the brand in a more positive light. And this is the kind of thing that advertising can do that really nothing else can on the scale that Tesla needs to be looking at these days, because like I said, they're no longer selling to the thousands, but now to the millions. And then hopefully in the next few years to the tens of millions. And if you want to do that, you have to be able to reach more widely than you can through basic word of mouth or even social media, even with a bullhorn as big as Elon Musk and Tesla. Tesla's is on X, it's still relatively small compared to all of the other social media and all of the other potential places that people could hear about Tesla. So that's the argument for advertising. The counter argument is that things have worked perfectly well up until now without advertising. But even Tesla, I think, has started to realize this because of course they have started to dip their toes in the waters and do some advertising. And I think a good kind of advertising. The ads I've seen on X and on YouTube have been very informational and they're very short and sweet and they don't really 
say like, oh, the competition sucks or something, or look at how pretty this car is or something like that. It's like we get this kind of range, this kind of acceleration, this kind of charging experience, et cetera, right? So it's very informationally based and it helps a broader audience of consumers kind of understand what the car is and why they might wanna purchase it. And that is in my mind, a pretty reasonable way to advertise a product. You're not kind of doing fluff pieces where you're like, look at the pretty dancers or something like that. And here's our car in the background. It's more like, why is this the kind of car that you would be interested in? And why is this the kind of car that you could get excited about? So while the argument would be that traditionally word of mouth and basic social media outreach has been fine, the counter argument, like I said, is you're again trying to reach a much broader audience of people. And there is a kind of a negative bias against Tesla right now because both mainstream media and other auto manufacturers really, really like to punch Tesla. Number one, because they don't respond. So it makes it really, really easy. But number two, because all of that negative press really generates a lot of hits. So mainstream media loves to do negative stories about Tesla. And I can tell you from experience that my parents and people who don't know Tesla that well are always coming to me with negative stories about Tesla. And I have to personally correct them. This is something that Tesla can take a stance against by doing advertising. But then of course we can make a counter argument that specifically the Super Bowl, it's not necessary for Tesla to advertise during the Super Bowl because over the past couple of years, as other auto manufacturers have touted their electric vehicles, search interest in Tesla has gone way, way up and you can see those metrics over the years. Now the question of course this year is whether anyone is going to advertise electric vehicles because they've sort of soured on that. So the expectation for me at least is this year Legacy Auto is going to focus on either hybrids or just on their cars in general and say, look at our Ram 1500 truck or something along those lines. And they won't really talk about the EV versions of that because they're not so hot on EVs anymore as they were for the past couple of years. So that's another counter argument to the counter argument. Tesla can always say, look, when other auto manufacturers advertise EVs, we get a huge uptick in searches for our own vehicles. That's great. But this year, my expectation is we're not gonna hear an awful lot about electric vehicles. We're gonna just sort of hear about brands when auto manufacturers advertise during the Super Bowl, which they pretty much always do. It's like beer and auto manufacturers. So with that, let's turn to X and Sawyer Merritt and Tesla for a second. Yesterday, Sawyer posted, breaking, Tesla has announced temporary Model Y price cuts in the US. New Model Y rear wheel drive and long range all wheel drive prices are reduced for deliveries now through February 29th. Prices will increase by $1,000 or more on March 1st. New starting prices are $42,990 with a $1,000 cut for the rear wheel drive and $47,990 for the long range. And of course, interestingly enough, if we go on Tesla's website, you can see that the Model 3 just has, excludes taxes and fees and stuff up here in the right corner. Whereas if we look at the Model Y, we can see $7,500 federal tax credit, which is nice for them. Also lease starting at whatever, but also a pricing update down here, which says new Model Y rear wheel drive and long range all wheel drive prices were reduced for deliveries now through February 29th. Prices will increase by $1,000 or more on March 1st. And then going back to Sawyer on X, he says, it's possible Tesla and announced price changes today instead of next Thursday, which is traditionally when Tesla announces price cuts, to take advantage of any potential Super Bowl-related website traffic tomorrow and into Monday. Tesla has in the past seen an increase in web traffic due to legacy automakers spending $7 million per Super Bowl ad for their EVs. This will also be the first post-Super Bowl time that Tesla has Google ads turned on. So a bunch of stuff to unpack here. Number one is that Tesla reduced the prices early, right? They didn't wait till next Thursday. They did it six Six days early instead, which makes Sawyer believe that they're doing it for a specific timing. And it does make complete sense that you would want to do something to sort of poke the competition in the eye with a $1,000 price cut. That's a very easy thing to do. And of course, with a timer on it, you know, February 29th, that makes people like go like, oh, I need to do this now rather than I can just sort of wait until whenever because that price change is going to be around forever. Then we get to the second paragraph. Tesla has in the past seen an increase in web traffic due to legacy automakers spending $7 million per Super Bowl ad for their EVs. So for their EVs is the important part because like I said, I really believe this year, Legacy Auto is gonna soft pedal their EV sales pitch and they're gonna go instead with just general brand sort of stuff or they're going to talk about plug-in hybrids or something along those lines. So that might not drive as much traffic as in the previous couple of years since they're not going to be advertising EVs as heavily. And of course we get this figure of $7 million per Super Bowl ad. Sounds like a lot, 
not, it is a lot, but let's say Tesla spent a million dollars doing an ad, which I don't even think they need to do. I think they can do it for cheaper than that. But let's just, I mean, let's just be crazy and say they spend $3 million on an ad and then they could run this ad twice or something. That's $17 million to run two ads in the Super Bowl, one in the first half, one in the second half, and of course to produce that ad. While $17 million is a lot of money for most of us, most of us humans, that's just peanuts. That's pocket change for Tesla. And if we look at the $1,000 price cut, interestingly enough, that sort of cost would be more or less equivalent. If you consider over the next three weeks that Tesla sells somewhere around 15,000 Model Ys in the United States, just as a rough guess, it's just throwing out a number, that's gonna be about $15 million it's going to cost them by doing that $1,000 price cut, whereas doing an ad and spending $3 million producing it and $14 million airing it twice, that's $17 million. So it's really pretty even between these two things. So that sort of puts the advertising spend in perspective. And of course, if Tesla did the ad for basically $100,000 or more or less for free and spent the $7 million to do one ad, that's much less money, like half the amount of money they would have to spend on that versus the $1,000 price cut. Also, interestingly enough, as Sawyer points out, this will also be the first post-Super Bowl time that Tesla has Google ads turned on. So if people do any kind of searching, let's say they search for an Ionic or they search for a Ram or something like that, Tesla via Google ads can actually pop up before you even see the real results because of course that's a paid for result. So the timing of the $1,000 price cut and the fact that it's a time limited offer basically until the end of this month indicates to me that Tesla is not going to advertise during the Super Bowl and this strategy will probably actually be fairly successful because again they'll have paid for ads plus the fact they did a price drop and it's time limited and people are going to be searching for vehicles after the Super Bowl because of course there's a lot of advertising going on during that. So this should generate quite a bit of traffic for Tesla. But the alternative is really, really interesting because again, it would not cost Tesla that much money, relatively speaking, to do a really big blowout ad. And of course, they could feature their ace in the hole, the Cybertruck, in that ad because of course it is pretty much a walking billboard. Everybody who sees one right now is really, really interested in it. And in terms of word of mouth and just natural organic social media and everything, the Cybertruck is the best thing that Tesla has done in a long time because it's just so iconic and so different, it really stands out. So if you imagine Tesla doing a 30 second ad just talking about how great their cars are, the efficiency, the range, the supercharger network, and then throw in some shots of the Cybertruck and say like, oh, and you can get a lot of work done with the Cybertruck as well, or alternatively, they could do two different ads. They could do one that was just Cybertruck focused and one that was focused on the fleet as a whole. Even mentioning that the Model Y was the best selling car in the world last year. If they did something like that, I think that they would actually get a lot of return on that. And again, my argument for doing advertising is not about today. Tesla is making sales today. It's all about the consumer in two years that they're going to need, assuming that robo taxis don't come online. If Tesla doesn't need to sell their next gen vehicle because they'll have full on robo taxis, then all bets are off because it really doesn't matter whether they advertise and whether people care about purchasing the car or not because they'll just ride in the car and they won't care. But I don't think that's going to happen because full self-driving is taking longer than everybody thought, including me. And also we just have regulations and everything around the world that's just going to be very complicated. So it's going to take a while for all of that stuff to happen. So Tesla for a period of time is going to need to sell that next gen vehicle and they're going to need to sell it on the order of five or 10 million of these per year. And that means that they need to be advertising advertising today to generate interest in the brand and trust in the brand in the wider world. And again, we live in a bubble. We tend to live in a bubble and we think everybody knows about Tesla and everybody thinks very positively about it. But in the wider world, people don't know about it and or think very negatively about Tesla. And this is why I would argue it would be a genius move if Tesla did a Super Bowl ad this year. Will they do it? I kind of doubt it, but it would be really cool if I was proven wrong. All right, let me know in the comments what you think. Be sure to like and subscribe and also let me know in the comments who's going to win the Super Bowl tonight. That would be really interesting. In the meantime, we'll hope for a Tesla ad and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.